Hello there! My name is Nate Jackson, the Eclipser. Sorry, I was getting a little, getting the dance of the dancing mood still got me. The dance is in me, you know. And we're finishing up the Carlos Sara Flamenco trilogy with El Amor Brujo. It's from 1986, 103 minutes, color, stereo, in Spanish with optional English subtitles, 1.66 to 1 aspect ratio. So, the basic difference between El Amor Brujo and the other two movies we saw, Blood Wedding and Carmen, is that El Amor, while Blood Wedding and Carmen are based around the dance, I guess El Amor Brujo is more of a straightforward adaptation. Um, you know, Carmen is sort of a movie based on the story of Carmen, along with along with dance dance numbers in them and blood wedding is sort of a dress basically a dress rehearsal of the play the opera play um, Elamor Brujo starts off with scenes of a movie lot and the camera moves to the Mexican village where they're set and from time to time we see aspects of the movie lot that remind us that they're on a set that this is a mo like a movie they're on a, in a movie lot, but for the most part, we are basically our focus is basically in this village that we've been transported to by the way of a camera, and that's basically it. It's basically just again straightforward adaptation of the Manuel de Falla ballet, and so let me give you a little quick synopsis of the plot. Uh, Candela and Jose are children. And Carmelo is in love with Candela. However, Candela and Jose's fathers agree to arrange their marriage at, when they are young. And so when, they, when they're older, they end up getting married. And of course, Carmelo is very jealous. And that being said, Jose actually is still in love with Lucia. And Lucia doesn't want anything to do with him because he's married now. And, of course, Carmelo is still in love with Candela. And so there's all kinds of triangles and squares and rectangles and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, one night, Jose gets into a card fight with uh, some guy, and he ends up getting murdered. Uh, Candela is sad, and Carmelo is actually arrested in by accident. They, the police believe that he's the one responsible for the murder because he's leaning over Jose's body with Candela at the time that they arrive. So Carmelo has to serve four years in prison. When he gets out, he finds out that Candela has maybe lost it a bit because she starts to see Jose's ghost, and she starts to dance with Jose's ghost. Carmelo now wants Candela. He wants you know, her because he's in love with her, and she is still just, she's driven to dance with this ghost. And so he doesn't know what to do. Um, Lucia wants Carmelo. And, you know, he's, he's just dedicated to Candela. And so they ask uh, Tia Hechicera. Um, and there's another name, another, it's funny enough, there's a different name on Wikipedia, which I never understood why the difference, I guess maybe it's the last name or something. Anyway, she tells them that the only way to get rid of Jose's ghost is for Lucia to dance with Jose's ghost because Jose's ghost, I guess, is still in love with Lucia. And so they dance and they have this big, you know, this big dance number at the, at the end. And Jose and Lucia go off and Carmelo and Candela are free. And I guess... They probably get married. It's it's not clear. It's basically how it ends. You know, Jose's ghost is is exercised out, and so yeah, that's that's all. That's all there is to that. Um, again, it's a this is a fantastic set. I'm definitely gonna pick this up in the near future. I've really enjoyed what Sara did with you know flamenco dancing. I've always had a love for Paco de Lucia and his music, and so seeing him in Carmen was fantastic. Um, if I had to pick a favorite, um, I'd probably say Carmen. I love the the realistic aspect mixed in with the, like the plot mixed in with 
this real life, you know, this real, you know, dance rehearsals and stuff like that. Um, I really like that aspect of it. Um, Eleanor Brujo, of course, was totally the opposite. And Blood Wedding, I feel like, was more of just the dress rehearsal and not so much the plot. I like the idea of plot and dance mixing together. So that's why I probably like Carmen the, my, was my probably my favorite. And uh, that's all I have to say. Um, I picked this stuff up. Elmo Brujo, but just as the others, A. The whole set gets an A for me. I hope to see more of Carlos Sora's work in the Eclipse series. And I hope uh, Criterion 8 gets a chance to see more of Sorrow's works. I know he's seeing Queer Cuervos, and I gotta still see Queer Cuervos. But for now, we've both got great little aspects of a fantastic director. So that's all I've got for you today. Um, so that's it. We're, we're, we're on our way. Um, it's gonna be a while before we get to the next one, which I believe is um, number seven is uh, Post War Kurosawa. Looking forward to seeing some Kurosawa. That'll be great. Um, we've actually got a lot planned for you this year, um, as far as the as far as the Eclipse series is. Um, I think it has something to do because they started pressing the Eclipse series a lot, you know, more often, much more often. Um, but also, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I think by this point, um, the Kawasora trilogy was released in like fall of two thousand seven, almost you know about actually almost. 10 years ago to this date, funny enough. Um, and so I think by that point, what happened is, I think Criterion started to like lessen up on their, how much they were releasing. And so I think what happened is they started to focus more on Eclipse because the Eclipse series was getting very popular. And so they jumped back and forth quite a bit. Um, and that's all, that's the, my theory. Um, I think they were also starting to reissue a lot of the older movies by that point, so a lot of Criterion's money was going toward reissuing the older DVDs on Blu-ray, which was slowly becoming a thing. Um, I don't think it really hit its stride until 2010. Of course, the Eclipse series is completely on DVD, which is cool, totally fine. We're happy with it. But anyway... I'm kind of going, both Criterion 8 and I are kind of going in order of release date. And so we're trying to, like, you know, ping-ponging back and forth. Um, I think he's got a lot of Criterion movies to do before before I get to the next series. Um, which actually, actually, I don't know. Actually, that's not, that might not be true, I believe. Um, yeah, actually, it's going to be a bit, bit more before we get to the next series. I'd say... Maybe, again, maybe in a month or so. A month or so, or maybe by early December, we'll do post-war Kurosawa. But again, we've got a lot lot more. We've got yeah, Lubitsch musicals, The Delirious Fictions of William Klein, Silent Ozu, Three Family Comedies, Larisa Shapiko, Aki Kaurismaki's Proletariat Trilogy, Kenji Mizoguchi's Fallen Women. Yeah, we'll probably get to, like, number 19, I think. Um, Chantel Ackerman in the 70s. That'll probably be all we'll do this season. So we've got a long ways to go. So if you're in a fan of the Criterion, the Eclipse series, Criterion is Criterion 8. This is Eclipse. If you're a fan of the Eclipse series, buckle up. You're in for a ride. And so that's all I've got for you for today. And, again, we'll see you all um, in about... A month, a m late November, early December for post-war Kurosawa. And uh, outside of that, if you get a chance to pick up the the Carlos Sora Flamenco trilogy, do it. You won't be disappointed. And until then, goodbye. <laughs>